Hey everyone, Pedro here from Dynamic Weapon Solutions. I uh, thought I'd bring you something a little bit different than what we've been doing. Um, I may be funny, but I'm clinically depressed now since uh, I recently lost uh, several loved ones. I don't know if you know this, but it was uh, last Friday I lost uh, 98,000 beautiful followers who I cherish daily. And, uh, you know, uh, well, okay, it is what it is. So it's cool though, I have 4,000 now, so I'm still quite the influencer. But point being, um, today I figured we'd bring you uh, a couple Glock builds, how to build them, why we build them this way, why I picked certain optics, certain barrels, uh, just lay it out, have a couple built ones, uh, might do a sick 80s montage. Uh, let's get started. All right, so we recently had a couple frames, a couple of my personal frames, uh, come back from a buddy, uh, Rocket City Stippling. Um, so I'm going to use, uh, in essence, 19 Gen 5, Block 45 uh, styling here today, which is basically a dark 19X. Uh, but let's get started anyway. So to be up front, this is my most favorite so far. Um, I like the pattern in it. It's quite aggressive. It's uh, very symmetrical and clean and uniform, which I like. Um, he did, I don't know if he normally does this, but I always request uh, ambidextrous cuts out here for the finger grip so I can either use my thumb or my index finger because I'm a lefty, or if we did it that way. Enter like Bond music, you know, like, like the Lord. You expect me to tap more finger? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. That's some old James Bond. Really showing my age. Okay, so anyways, um, Glock 45 frame. It's only going to take 19 Gen 5, 45, 19X slides, or just 19 Gen 5. They all are the same, as far as slides are concerned. So what I think we should do first is pick a slide. So we have the frame. Let's pick a slide. Now our options are... Uh, mark one aggressor, straight serrations. This is on an OEM slide. Notice the OEM serrations to the rear. Straight serrations on top. Available top window option as well. Also, something that's on the website, if you add top window, you still get the side windows. So there's been a little confusion about that, so we're working to get that resolved so you can see it blatantly on the website. But yes, if you get top windows, you're adding, you're adding the window only, and you would keep the other side. So we have that one. It's a very popular option. We have our bread and butter, our most popular, uh, the Mark III Reaper slide um, in burnt bronze. It's a Gen 5 RMR cut with our plate cover uh, chevrons to match. Uh, we have the same thing in OD Green with suppressor sights on it already. We have the Mark VI destroyer slide 19 gen 5 with uh, all black suppressor sites which is what we typically recommend uh, and I can go over why once it's built with our actually DLC coated plate cover which is pretty cool took forever but we got it so we have that and then again another Reaper which again we have quite a few inventory of gen 5s ready to ship as well um, but yeah, let's get started. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the responder. Um, Glock 45 to me kind of has the outside the waistband carry as well as inside the waistband. Um, and to me, responder, CCW, EDC kind of has the vibe. So let's, uh, let's just go with that. So I'm going to set this aside right here. Imagine, let's get it. We're gonna take a block, slide, and plate cover. Uh, so here's our 19 Gen 5 internals. I'm gonna assemble them in front of you and then we will uh, put them in. La 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 la, save the bags. As they say in Paw Patrol, because I have children, don't lose it, reuse it. Channel liner tool. 
striker assembly, striker spring, striker, couplings to hold set striker spring, and a firearm block. So you can use this, different holes, different configures, it'll hold parts. Uh, this one's actually magnetic. I got it on Amazon for like 12 bucks. Uh, they're basically on every bench around here because as they, they don't really go bad, but as they get beat up, I can order it and have it within two days. Uh, prime business, baby. Bet you wish you could have these slides in two days, huh? Well, you can. Just click on ready to ship. Guaranteed shipping within three to five business days. Business days, okay? We're closed on Sunday. My guys need one day off, okay? Chill. Anyways, striker, like that. I picked the hole that fits. Can you cut in like a Fast and Furious shift where the linkage goes to the, forget about it, cut, blah. <laughs> So the striker's assembled. Now I grab my plunger, safety plunger, safety plunger spring. Blah, insert like so. Set that aside. So again, uh, extracting rod, extracting rod spring. A little pressure. And then the coupler until you hear a snap. Voila. Okay. And then you have the extractor itself. Voila. Gen 5s are slightly different. And an OEM backplate. And channel liner. So because this is a uh, pre cut slide. Uh, meaning it was cut from one of our blanks, a 17-4 stainless. There's no channel liner in here because it's not OEM and it didn't come from block. So we will insert one now. We we'll typically have a little uh, piece here for each extra, like when they connect, you just scrape that off. That's typically what I put towards the front. And then you just insert like so. I will uh, give it a tap or two uh, based on my levels and years of experience I can tell you that's all the way in um, so now let's assemble the slide with all the parts you see here um, ideally for me I like to put the safety plunger in first match the hole with the hole there's a the spring see it moving properly depth it's not getting hung on anything uh, so that's good to go so I'll take my thumb I'll depress it in all the way take the extractor you ever seen Apollo 13 or like any space movie where they dock dock bam call it deep space nine feel me Okay, so now insert it. So you don't really have to worry about this coming out unless this extractor backs out. It's kind of locked in there. And then um, the striker assembly is how I like to do it. If you do it the other way around, sometimes you have to depress the plunger to get it to go all the way in the striker assembly. So if you do it this way, you don't really have to do excess work for no reason. And then the extractor rod, spring, and extractor coupler uh, goes into here, like so. All right. And then you need a back plate. That says, I didn't grab a block tool. I'll use a pen. Cap. Ow, oh, hang down. The light makes it where I can't even see it, to be honest. Okay, I'll use a pen.
Sometimes it's a little hard, so I just give it a little American tap. Woo! All right, so now we have a full functioning slide. Extractor's moving. Striker came through. No issues there. Extracting is extracting like it should. All is well. So now we'll pick a barrel. What do you think? OEM? Chameleon? Gold. I personally think for this one we should do black. OEM, keep it simple. Wanted to show you the fit. Obviously, we have black barrels uh, some days, but this way you get to see the fitment, to see they work, everything is okay. Uh, OEM guy rod, which I don't like. I don't like the dual spring, but for this one, we'll use it, and maybe I'll show you the aftermarket spring and why I choose that as well. Okay, so we have the frame here. So we have the frame and slide. Pretty simple. You want trigger forward. Not like this, it won't go on. Sometimes it will, but realistically it gets a little, it went on. But typically want to slide the, the trigger forward. Now keep in mind it has no lube, it has really nothing on it as of yet. So there we go. Check it again, no ammo before everyone freaks out, which, Visual, physical, and spiritual. Let's get physical. Press. Okay, mechanically it seems to be functioning. Okay, there you are. Um, now we can go a step ahead. What I'm gonna do now is uh, install a trigger. Uh, these are kind of things that I would do on my Glocks and just leave them after uh but let's get to it so a lot of people have problems with this especially newer shooters so take your hand like this slip it in pull back you press push forward with your thumb always the trigger one that means look at here now it's off. Pretty simple. Again, I also safety checked prior to doing that. You saw it here first. So here's the frame. We already disassembled the both. Let's put a trigger in this guy. So you'll need a block, a Glock, and your sock, full sock check. This is an Overwatch Precision DAT trigger. I personally like these, Agency, Ooh. and my all-time favorite Fowlers, but uh, they've been doing their 2011, so they have stopped production on the other ones for now. Uh, there we are. So let's go ahead and set this aside. Uh, they have a Glock uh, tool where you can kind of just press down and you're good to go. Um, I'm just going to use this though because I didn't want to pull from all their stuff. So you want the bag well, I'm sorry, bag release. Uh, okay. You want the mag release facing up if you're right handed. Whoop. Verify, yeah, okay. I'll get this one out first. Just press. It's good to go. Now we do sell and have the titanium pins as well. If you'd like that, it's up to you. Okay, so like I said, you want this mag release side up. I like to stick my thumb and uh, finger, index finger in here with my thumb to kind of wiggle the mag catch and release. And then I either can depress or what you can also do too is you can tap it, magic tool. And it will come out 
no problem. Voila, there's that with this. Uh, just a simple punch. Again, you can find those on Amazon for 30 to 40 bucks and you're good to go. Pull the back here. It's gonna pull up the locking block, which is right here. It's gonna pull up the trigger and the ambi mag release catch stop and then the oem trigger assembly and again now all you have is a frame so we'll set this down uh it's important to note that this oem trigger is trash but more importantly as you release this guy how it goes in so it catches on this little hook right in here and then slips on the inside on the gen 5. The spring and mechanisms in there are already uh, good to go. And then note that they have a little uh, grease on here. Like grease lightning. Hey, yo, Sandy. What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to go back to Australia. Sorry, I just watched that with my kids. By the way, not appropriate to watch with children. It's like a like a dance instructor trying to hook up with a teenager and everyone's just chill with it. Different times, I guess. They're smoking in their parents' house, drinking drinks. I mean, we all did it, but like chill. You know, daddy chill. So what I'm trying to do is hook right here. Blah! There we go. Aftermarket trigger install. Now there's a few things we can do. We can polish this up. We can, I mean, this is actually pretty polished, but uh, we can cut this a little bit more like a, instead of a, like a ramp, it's like a gradual, we can give it a notch and then have it go a little more aggressively so the plunger reacts quicker to the pull. Um, but honestly, I think for now it's okay. Grab your frame. I'm not really wanting to show you guys how to modify because that's not okay. Can't do anything like that. But I can show you how to install and have fun, apparently. Let's, uh, we're gonna slide this back in here. Okay, just the way it went. Push the locking block back in. You press this down. We're gonna lock the rear. All right. To the rear. And even if you don't have a hammer, you'd be surprised what can be facilitated to make a hammer. I mean, I have a hammer, but my point is, use what's around you. I don't know why I did that, there's no dust on it. Uh, OEM part. Now I'm gonna put it in from the opposite way pull the trigger forward. I heard a click, so I know it's chill. All right. Again, hammer or your other base of your screwdriver. Take my good stuff, my snap on's over there. Um, you can wiggle it a little bit and give it a tap -roo. What you really wanna do is probably move that trigger to get that to fit in there a little bit. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of work. Sometimes it's just easier to do this. Take 742, make sure everything's pressed in. You want it to be super lined up, which that seems pretty good. You can also kind of forcibly line everything up. Actually, it looks like if you push your hand down on the trigger, it feels a little better. There you go. I like it even, Steven.
Okay, so we have the trigger in. Seems to be functioning mechanically okay if I'm not pressing on, this thing doesn't even wanna move. So I have to press the trigger safety for it to engage, um, which is cool. Uh, everything is installed. I got both pins, trigger's looking fly. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this down for a moment now and let's install. Oh, -ho. Uh, optic. So I'm just going to use this. Uh, this is one of our show models, uh, a 407 C right here. Nice little press. Uh, we cut to a depth of uh, 0.145, uh, give or take a couple uh, human hairs, uh, but perfectly normal and standard in the industry. Some people cut a little more shallow, uh, but then I think it throws off kind of the, you really want to go as deep as you can. Um, just a couple people, again, mostly inexperienced people, which is fine. Uh, when you get an optic cut, they uh, it does drill a hole into the extractor rod area which is again, perfectly normal based on the screws you use and everything, you shouldn't have an issue. Um, there are a few companies that do one long, one short. Um, if you mess those up, your extractor won't, uh, your extractor rod won't move and you'll have a uh, failure to eject stove pipes and all kinds of issues. You, the way to test that, uh, if you're not on a live range, uh, which, you know, I mean, you can defer to which way you prefer, that was clever, but you uh, back out the screw a little bit and you can rack safety uh, dummy rounds through it and it should start to work again and then you can go test and lock down. But again, both of our screws are at the same depth so that shouldn't be an issue with us. Um, but things happen, people use, don't use the Trigicon ones ever, that's for MOS. So I guess if you have an MOS, do that, but that's not what we recommend. Okay, so the 505, 507C, 407C, same cut as the 508T, 509T with adapter plate and the RMR SRO. So for this one, 407, I, I typically don't use a lot of the other features besides the dot um, from Holosun. So these do make sense to me. They're like 260 instead of the 310, 350, 400, and 450 for the other ones. Um, Okay, so perfectly fine budget build for me. Uh, we do have our screws here, Torx heads, T15s, uh, 6 seconds by 3 8 is what we use. Uh, so you'll go ahead and put a little blue Loctite. Uh, this is the gel, not the paste. Um, way too much, which is why I like to try the paste, but that's okay. You just really don't want too much in there. Uh, if you want to wear a glove, that's fine. But that's, that's more than enough. Okay. And then might as well just douse the rest. Which is actually why I tried to use a paste version because it this makes a mess. I mean, when you do it all day, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but like once in a while is not a big deal. But so it's a T15 head. This is actually from a Wheeler Kit uh, Master Gunsmith set. It's like 90 bucks again on Amazon. Um, <laughs> Butterfingers, caught it. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Okay. I go to where they're hand tight and then I typically will just do a tad more. Okay. Doesn't wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. My money don't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. Okay. Uh, if you want to be too spec though, which I know there's a lot of people out there that do. Again, this is a, uh, a fat wrench from uh, Wheeler. Pretty cool um, 
set to about it's a little high. Must use it on something else. I'm gonna set it to 15. You can do 12 to 18 foot pounds, inch pounds rather, not foot pounds. Again, I find that just a little bit over hand tight gets you there. I didn't even move them. Uh, so they might be around 20, but you're okay. It's up to you. You can back it out and do it 100% to spec. Um, full hold on Loctite in 24 hours, pretty good hold in about 20 minutes. Uh, it's up to you. Ideally, what you want to do next would be to get um, a paint pen and just mark a line on the screw. On the screw and um, on the optic. So if they do start to back, you can see it and we can either torque down again or see what's going on. But again, you really shouldn't have an issue. Sometimes you do. Maybe you didn't use a new, a a new Loctite or maybe you used the paste and it didn't work out. So then they thought you were a piece of shit and didn't know what you were doing. Uh, but seriously, don't use the paste. It doesn't bind as well. I, I ended up having to read on it because I did buy some of that for a little bit. Uh, full disclosure and more people in the actual showroom had issues one particular day um, So of course we uh, reinstalled everything used the proper and we're good to go, but uh, You live and you learn About three people had issues All right, so then you take the frame Block 45 overwatch precision dat trigger sick as fudge on a Sunday. Trigger forward. Voila. All right. Now, we use black sights so that when you are looking at a target or whatnot, this is an older model too, by the way, the V2. That's why we kept it in green. Um, it's too bright. But I like it because it kind of makes the sights fall out of uh, what you're looking at. So you can focus on the dot, which is the primary reason of the sights. Uh, so all to me, and I believe the industry starting to think this way, but I'm not going to speak for them because, you know, why not? Um, night sights only ensure you see the sights, not your target. And these, the whole purpose of an the target, I'm sorry, the whole purpose of a red dot is to make you target oriented. So you look at the target, you engage and you bring the dot to it. You don't have to shift and look at the dot and try to put it on there like this. You literally simp simply look, have your zero and everything configured and you take the dot to it and engage. So that's one of the reasons I like all black sites. Um, okay, so again, uh, back to the sites. So um, I like the all black sites. We do have night sites if you want them. But uh, based on life and experience and FBI data and everything else like that, what you would find is you need a light on almost everything you run with the firearm. I personally do it, whether it's competition, um, setup or not. So then you'll, through the magic of rendering, whoop, an X300 light, I like the uh, A, thousand lumens it's the ultra so it just slides right on okay so you notice it's a little loose uh, this one was set up for glock so what you can actually do is just put a little black electrical tape right here and boom even all the way to here and it'll thicken up just enough to make it so smooth and buttery hiya uncle roger shoot 45 and then boom you have your light, so now you have plenty of backsplash, whatever you're looking at, um, to engage, to not momentarily. Your moment, I don't really use this. I'll engage with mainly my thumb. And then as I come off, I'll use my index finger here to roll it up. Um, but I don't know if you can see this, you can look so you have target identification and uh, or threat, threat target, whatever you want. And you have plenty of luminescence still bla blasting back at you to see. 
for a good site picture for uh, night or whatever engagement. Um, and that's it. Honestly, this hasn't been lubed. It feels good, but I would over lube it first uh, if you're gonna put anything new on, especially a slide, the Cerakote process itself. Uh, we take this slide, uh, whether OEM or pre-cut, um, as they ran through the machine, they get all oily with the coolant and all this stuff. So we, and then they go to the tumbler, which actually will come out dry after about six hours. Um, more like soggy, pasty. So then we clean it rigorously. We'll sandblast it and then we'll dip them in acetone uh, for up to an hour and then we'll bake them for up to two hours. Uh, it's called gas off, uh, which will basically get all the oils and gunk and stuff off it. And you repeat it by cleaning it, acetone back and forth till it's acceptable or AKA no chemicals, no grease, no gunk, no fest, no muss. That's the power of pine saw, baby. Just kidding, acetone. Um, fabuloso for the Latinos out there. So whatever. Um, and that's it. So over lube it because it's going to come in dry. We used to lube them, but then we got yelled at because people would get upset that we didn't use their lube to lube their gun because we don't know them like that. Uh, but I really like this slide in all seriousness. I like the knurling. I like the design. I mean, I made it, so I guess that makes sense that I like it. But it's very clean. Um, a few people actually copy it, uh, which is, I'm supposed to, like, means I'm doing something right, I guess. So that's cool. Um, but it's plenty of texture. This is actually one that's pretty well used in the military and law enforcement. Uh, we've actually had a local officer. Uh, I'm not going to mention names, of course, but we've had a local officer get into a a shootout with this, it ended up being a good shooting. Uh, full gun that we built, it was like a, a shot from like 25 yards, one-handed. Um, you know, unfortunately the, the life had to be taken, but um, more fortunately is that officer got to go home that night um, to me. Uh, but yeah, that's where it's at. This is a Glock 45. These are the options. Check it out, blah, like this. Like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this. Okay. <coughs> All right. So the only other thing I would add, um, realistically, would be our base pad. So we kind of got this idea from the responder slide. It gives you grip. It's subtle. It adds two to three as of right now. Um, and then we have the California compliant versions. The California compliant version, uh, which I honestly would run with 17s or 15 anyways for the added weight and just grip if you weren't looking to add. Um, and even for California, New York, other places with strict limits, uh, it just makes it really easy to uh, have a drop comes out, right? As you bring it in, you index it, you have all this texture here to just super insert that bad boy. And you run it, da 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 You can strip it, rip it, but honestly with the weight and everything else, it comes right out. But that's probably what I would do. This would be, I'll uh, probably just make this thing my uh, new everyday carry for a little bit. Um, I am starting to get more into the 509Ts. I like the enclosed. Uh, option. This one, it wasn't cut for it. I like direct mount so it can sit a little lower and you can use sights. Um, optics have come a long way, but I still like to have co-witness. I'm not the, I don't care if it's one third or uh, absolute. It's really personal preference. I would say if this is your first build, just get what you can. Typically one thirds are a little harder to build depending on company specs. Um, they, Dawson Precision will help you with that though. You just call and ask the depth we cut this to, and then based on that, they can give you the uh, requirements for the sites to be one third or absolute like these ones are. Um, but I think the main thing to realize is that you can build your EDC at home. Um, we do site installs for free. Uh, so it's really up to you if you want us to have us put them on. Even if you send them in, we'll do it. No additional charge. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is a ideal EDC and also in outside the waist exposed carry and a safari land holster so you have some retention. Uh, 
This is good. I mean, this needs to be lubed, but other than that, it's it's ready to run these streets, partner. Um, yeah, that's it. So whether it's in your Safariland holster exposed or inside your waistband or in a backpack concealed, uh, this is pretty much, to me, an ideal setup. Um, again, I like the 509Ts. I don't know if I already went over that, but I like the fact of it enclosed. Um, I'd add a little black tape uh, right here if it's loose, like it is, just a little bit. Um, that would get rid of that and it wouldn't even bother you. A um, couple of our base pads and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, again, uh, you know, we did recently just lose our Instagram page of close to 90, 100,000 followers, so it is what it is. Um, there's a lot of years of hard work, and to be honest, I don't think we could ever get back to that in this algorithmic shadows realm, Thor underworld. What are you doing, Riv? Shot dog walked by. Um, but it is what it is. We're going to push on. Um, the it's dynamic underscore weapon underscore solutions for right now um, we'll be releasing the lifestyle brand too, dynamic Industries. so um, please stay tuned like comment subscribe ring that bell notification uh, we still do have the youtube giveaway going every thousand followers we're going to give away a slide or some variant of it we also have uh, on our instagram the ps5 ultimate summer giveaway every hundred bucks spent on the website enters you in a raffle for the end of uh September, end of summer, uh, we're gonna add something to it. I'm gonna go buy a big screen TV. So it's gonna be PS5 and TV now. Uh, we're gonna keep, as it keeps growing, we're gonna keep growing so we guys can really, so we can hook you guys up really, really well. Um, but stay tuned. We might as well just do a giveaway on Instagram too. Every thousand followers, let's do something crazy. Let's just uh, give back to the community that supported us for a long time and help us get where we need to be. Uh, stay out, more videos coming soon. Peace.